Hello, hello, and welcome once again to a Beatles program that we call Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show in which we talk about what's happening in the world of the Beatles, news-wise. I'm Ken Michaels, known for hosting a Beatles syndicated show called Every Little Thing, being joined by my partner in crime here, Mr. Beatles Examiner himself, and that is Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hello, everybody. On today's show, we're going to be discussing a DVD that just recently came out on Ringo. And this is a concert DVD called Ringo at the Ryman. And um, this particular concert took place on Ringo's 72nd birthday on July 7th of 2012 at the Ryman Theater in Nashville, Tennessee, with his most recent lineup of All-Stars. And um, I want to know what your take is on the concert and we'll we'll share our thoughts about this as we review Ringo at the Ryman. Well, I thought you know, I thought uh, the show when I saw it live was a good show. I um I, I think I've said before what my favorite all-star band is and that this year did not change that. But this is a good this is a great I was actually more impressed with the show after watching the DVD. It's tightly edited, it's it's well done. The band gives a good performance. I have a couple of you know favorite moments in the DVD, which we'll we'll talk about. But mm. This is a good this is a good show, and if you you know if you like if you've enjoyed Ringo Ringo's All Star Band before, you'll like this one. Um, you know uh, I think uh, Steve Lukather is fantastic all the way through the show. I have a special like for Greg Raleigh's songs. Maybe it's because of the Bay Area connection because Santana is from here and and um and I saw Santana way back when and and so I've seen Greg with Santana and um and he was just fantastic those three Santana songs are just really well done and, and actually I thought the band really jumped on those songs and really it really um you know, really kind of extended themselves when I saw them live, they didn't do it so much here, but uh, but uh, when I saw them live, they really extended those songs and and really um, jammed on them a little bit, which was really good. Right. So the Santana songs and the Toto songs, mm-hmm. those are the ones where they really jammed and really took the songs, played played them for several more minutes right. than the record. They really and they re- and they really did it. Uh, it's not so as long on the DVD, unfortunately, but it is. But it, in concert, they really took them, took them. Uh, ex- they really got extended with them, and I actually was kind of surprised they didn't do it a little longer on on Ryman. But oh well. Um, so what, what then, songs? What songs were shorter on the DVD? Everybody's everything here um, that I that I saw live went on for a long time. They really uh, kept going on that one. I think they you're right. Yeah, and they did not on the on the uh, on the DVD. That's the one I noticed the most. It, uh, the other two, they extended a little bit, but everybody's everything. They really went on for for several minutes, and I was actually surprised um, when I saw them that they were still going and going and going. And they and, and of course, like I said, because um, those songs have a Bay Area connection, the crowd you know, knew those songs very well. Everybody's Everything was actually a song that was played on the radio. I don't know if it was played on the radio in the on the East Coast. Oh, it sure was. Was it? Oh, yeah. But a big album played, cut, you know. It was know. played a lot out here. I remember the old, anybody from this area, from the Bay Area, if remembers the old KSAN, they would play that song a lot. And uh, it got it got played quite a bit. So it was good to hear that song. I'm glad they brought they brought that song back. Like I said, it doesn't seem as long on the DVD as as it was when I saw it live. I don't know if they trimmed it. It didn't seem like they trimmed it, but it it just they they held it in a little bit. I think maybe they were told to kind of keep it keep it uh, keep it in a little bit. So yeah, I really think you're right about that because I did get the feeling that maybe it was too short. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I you know it was kind of surprising actually. But and then the other the other part is. Of course, Joe Walsh, who comes in to celebrate Ringo's birthday, and you know it's like you know two old friends, really. And I don't know if you noticed the same thing I did, Ken, but I'll tell you, there was a spark that the band really lit up 
when when they started doing Rocky Mountain Way, and um, I don't know if you know it was just something different or what, but they really kind of all joined together, and and that number is actually the best number I think on the DVD. I think it's fantastic. Hmm. They, they I love found... it too, but I don't know if that's the best one. And I think there was a spark, definitely, but there are moments there, especially on. Yeah, as I just said, as we just said, the the Santana songs and the Toto songs, because they really jam, you know, when you really get to showcase the talents of the band members on certain songs. Mm -hmm. And the thing with Rocky Mountain Way is that it's such a staple of classic rock radio now. It's such a great rock song. It gets everybody up. Right. So, and it was his only moment there on stage. It wasn't like he was there for several songs. He only had the one song, and it made it even more special. Well, and then and we also did not, and I was going to mention, and and I'm sure you would agree with this, is the Todd Rundgren songs. Uh, Todd has a you know a natural kind of spark too that that I mean he just has to he just has to stand there and everything kind of goes boom, and that's what happened here too with with his songs. Um, you know I uh, have a little quarrel with the selection of, the, of some of the songs. I kind of wish he'd done "Hello, It's Me." Well, he did do that at the beginning of the tour. Yeah, I wish it had been on here, and it's not. Love is the Answer is not um, a song I particularly, you know, think was a good choice. Oh, but I, I definitely disagree with you there. That's that's one of the absolute highlights for me. Really? Because I love that song itself. Okay. I mean, the song the song was a hit in the United States for England, Dan, and John Ford Coley, and a lot of people don't know that Todd was the writer of that song. It's actually a Utopia song. Mm -hmm. And so for Todd to do it, which he doesn't do that often, that particular song, that was a real treat. And that's really one of those songs, I think that's, you know, the the chorus is one that you sing along with. Mm -hmm. And people know the song, but I like it for the fact that not everybody knows that's a Todd Rungman song. And the fact that he did it, and it's one of those songs to sing along with. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I'll, I'll concede that point to you. It's just personally, it's not the song uh, that I would have picked him to do um you know but that's you know that's me um but i mean there are so many other i mean uh, as is usually the case with ringo and the all-star band they they pull out songs that you know that people know and you know it's like you know um old home week listening to the rundown of some of the songs that they do mm -hmm. um and i was going to say with uh, and i don't know if i said this but with joe walsh i really wish that they would have uh, guests more often pop up maybe at some point maybe you know a couple of shows on the tour have have somebody join them mm -hmm. on stage like that and uh i think that would be kind of that would be even for just one song i think it'd be a great it'd be kind of fun and the band this is supposed to be a band of musicians playing together for the fun of it and you really saw that with the joe walsh number and i think that would happen a little more often if they had these kind of you know, kind of special little things where they weren't exactly, you know, prepared for it. I mean, it seemed like that's what kind of what made this work is that it wasn't uh, form so formatted, you know, in the show, and that's mm. what uh, was so so much fun. Well, first of all, as far as the fun aspect, I think this concert captured a lot of it. I mm -hmm. mean, apart from the fact that the musicians are so great and their playing is so great, you do have moments there, especially with Todd Rungren where he gets goofy on stage, and he yes, makes he certain uh, facial expressions, or he looks back and forth at Greg Bissonette, and they're playing off each other. Yeah, and I was going to mention that, too, with, with him and Bissonette uh, making faces at each other. That's actually one of the funny parts of the, of the DVD, watching them do that. <laughs> yeah, I had the thrill uh, a while ago of interviewing Todd, mm -hmm. and one of the things that I brought up to him, as far as this tour is concerned, is that a favorite moment of mine is when the band is doing the song Boys. And and Todd is running around the stage, and he runs behind Greg Bissonette, and he's he's acting like a little kid. You know, it's like he's transformed into the kid that loved the Beatles when he was younger. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's that's part of the fun. It isn't just the fact that these are ace musicians and doing a great job. What did, what did he say about that? Well, it's pretty much that. You know, he mm -hmm. likes to have fun on stage. It's not just a serious moment. But uh, especially songs that take you back in time like that. I mean, right. a song, a lot of the early Beatles stuff or any Beatles stuff takes you back to that time. And yes, it is it is classic music and it's timeless. But it also takes you back to when you were younger and, and you were a major fan of the group. And here you are doing the song with one of them. 
Right. So that's part of the fun and part of the magic. But I think the comment that you made, probably the first one that you made, is, is really how I feel. I think you appreciate the tour uh, so much more from watching this DVD. Because I went to, I think it was three shows. I try to go to two or three with every Ringo tour because I love them so much. Mm -hmm. And when you're out in the audience and you see the band on stage, you can't see everything that these cameras capture. Right. So you could see Greg Raleigh in front of the keyboards there, and you know he's playing, and you can hear his playing, but you don't see his hands on the keyboards, which is something that I really loved about this DVD. The camera work is extraordinary. Yeah, it is really good. I, I noticed that about the, the, the keyboard yeah, hands on the keyboard, too, which was really kind of nice. You know, he's known for playing the Hammond, the Hammond organ, and that's so much a part of his sound, and here are his hands up close playing it. So I can't say for sure how many cameramen they had, but I, I have to figure that there must have been a few cameramen for each musician because every single time there was a moment when a musician had his time, when it was either Steve Lukather playing a guitar solo or uh, Greg Bissonette flourishing, you know, whatever he was doing on drums, a great moment, especially for the more complicated uh, pieces, the Santana music or Toto or stuff like that, the camera was right on them. And if there were moments, like I said, when Todd and, and Greg or uh, Greg Bissonette are bouncing off each other, the camera captured that. Mm -hmm. Everything was captured in this show. And I think I said in a previous show that I'm kind of turned off to a lot of the concerts that are very slickly produced where... You've got people in the audience or people who are being interviewed, and they talk over the songs. Here, it's just the music. You watch the band on stage. You see some of the audience reaction, but you get so many different camera angles and angles from the back of the stage, too. Right. And so many times when, like, the cameraman knew exactly what they were doing. Todd, by the way, was wearing a Ringo shirt. Yeah, that's a great shirt. He, he wore that the night I saw him, too, and... Uh, yeah, that was a that was a that's a very cool shirt. Yeah, and he was wearing the in, for people that don't know the cover of the old Wave album. Right. Yeah, uh, the front cover is is a headshot of Ringo when he was, I guess, late teens, early twenties, mm -hmm. and it's it's a picture of that on his shirt, and it's not only great to see him wear that, but he goes to the center of the stage when he's doing bang the drum all day, and he's playing the snares, the mm -hmm. snare drums to that, and behind him. Is Ringo playing drums? Yeah. <laughs> so it's so cool to see Todd wearing a Ringo shirt and Ringo right behind him, a song right. about drumming. Right. You know, that, that was really staged rather well. I mean, he was always in the center of the stage doing Bang the Drum, but here it is on camera to see it. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different angles that you see from watching what the cameramen do. They really were at the top of their game in, in putting this, this show together. I really think that they did an extraordinary job. Yeah, so, they did. You know, there are a lot of things that you won't see if you're in the audience seeing the show. And even if you watch what's on the big screen when you go to a concert, you're not going to capture all the things that all these multi-cameras can do. And, you know, there's, for me, I I've said this very often, one of the biggest joys in going to see Ringo and the All-Stars is the fact that Ringo loves to drum behind these other people and do their material. He's not just there to do his own songs. He loves doing that. But it's the only place where you can get to hear Ringo drumming on Evil Ways or right. Rosanna, or Africa, or Broken Wings, or I Saw the Light, or Love is the Answer. It's the only opportunity you're ever going to get for Ringo to drum behind songs that he normally wouldn't drum behind. Yeah, I especially enjoyed him doing doing the Santana songs like uh, Evil Evil Ways. I mean, that doing him and, and Greg uh, doing that together, that was, uh, that was pretty nice. Yeah, when the cameras are on the two of them, on Ringo and Greg Bissonette, you, you get to see their interaction with each other. Right. And what each one contributes to the song. Mm -hmm. So um, kudos to the Kramerman. That's all that I have to say because they really made this such an enjoyable show. And, um, you know, this is one particular case where the camera work really made the show. It's just as important as the performance. Mm -hmm. Because when you've got everything nailed, when you know Todd Rundgren is going to be making a funny face on stage and the camera's on that... <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, or anything like um, uh, Mark Rivera, who was so much a part of the show. I've um, called him the most valuable player as far as as far as the group goes, because he's just he's just fantastic. Yeah, the first time I saw this show, what struck me, uh, I, I was so impressed with this. I mean, Mark plays so many different instruments, but 
when it came to certain songs like Rosanna, Mark sang the higher part. Mm -hmm. And you got to see that. So when Mark is singing, the camera's on him. Right. Whatever Mark is doing, whatever is being showcased at that moment, the camera is on it. And it's not only on it, but you get different views. Right. So it's just uh, tremendous work that was done. Yeah, and, and uh, what's going to be really interesting next year is the fact that it's the 25th anniversary of the All-Star Band. And he, Ringo hasn't said about do, him, about uh, doing anything next year to celebrate, but it'd be, it'd be fun to see what he does. Uh, I, don't, I honestly don't know if Ringo is into anniversaries. You know, well, I, I'm always reminded now, and you remember this, when mm -hmm. it was the anniversary a few months ago, in August, when he officially became a, a Beatle 50 years ago. Right. And he was asked the question, what are you going to do to celebrate? And his answer was, it's going to be a day like any other day. So... You know, I don't know if he's into anniversaries. Maybe it reminds him of how long ago it was, and that's a turnoff to him. I don't know. But I don't know if, if Ringo is so much into celebrating anniversaries or major milestones. I think 25 years is a lot easier to, to celebrate than 50, for one. And I think it's an achievement that he's really proud of. Not to say not proud of being with the Beatles for, you know, for 50 years, but there's also the the media thing with the Beatles that isn't really as strong as with the all-star band. And so I, I, I think he, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't do something. I would, I would be very surprised if he ignores it. Because I think you actually, you may be right about that because this would call more attention to the all-star band. Right. And it's one of his own achievements. Right. Right. So I, I, I'm looking to see that he'll, that he'll do something with, with that next year but uh, one thing we didn't mention was at the end of the show when they come out to do with a little help from my friends there's a whole bunch of guest stars on stage although nobody really takes over but joe walsh comes back out and uh, vince gill is out there brad paisley is out there felix cavalier and richard right. marks mm -hmm. to be in the all-stars or are there to help celebrate Ringo's birthday but that's really kind of a minor thing i mean really the show the show as it stands, is, you know, is the main thing here. And, and it's a great, it's really, you know, as usual with Ringo, it's, it's, a good, it's a good show. There is a moment there in the middle of the concert when the audience sings Happy Birthday to Ringo. Mm -hmm. But other than that, they don't make a big deal about the birthday. No, they don't. And actually, that, that's kind of one of the funny moments of the show, too, because Mark Rivera interrupts to get them to sing. And Ringo turns around and he goes, this is going to be your last show. <laughs> kind of joking with him, which is, which is funny. But, uh, but, yeah, I mean, that's really nice. And Ringo, you know, uh, throws out some from little things to the crowd. And the, the crowd, of course, eats it up and they love it. Yeah. But um, I was really kind of surprised, actually, because he was in the Ryman that he didn't do something a little more historical. Um, I know that there was a picture of him wearing a cowboy hat. And he doesn't wear it in the he doesn't wear it in the DVD, which kind of surprised me. I actually expected to see that right a little bit. Um but that's neither here nor there. Um it's um it's a, it's definitely a fun show. Uh also, uh you're talking about what Ringo said to Mark Rivera, a funny moment is um early on when Todd before he did I saw the light he said, only a genius such as this can put together a love fest such as this. And he also said, this is the, the lovey-doveyest band Ringo has put together. He said, we all sleep in one big bed. <laughs> ah, yes. Ah, yes. And Ringo, <laughs> Ringo just kind of smiled at that one. But, yeah. Uh, but, but, again, this is, this is, you know, this is a fun show. And it's a, if you saw the show, you know, how, you know, you know what, it was, what it was like. If you didn't see the show, here's a, a great way to, to see it. Hmm. Add it to your collection of all-star DVDs. So if you had to um, pick just a couple of highlights from the show, two or three, I already know Joe Walsh is one of them. What would be the others? Um, Evil Ways would be another, and Bang the Drum. Only because every time Todd does that, he just has a, bl he just has a blast with it. Uh-huh. Yeah, so. I, I would definitely point to... I loved all of it, <laughs> mm. you know, but uh, Love is the Answer is one of my favorite moments, but definitely the Santana songs and the Toto songs, because I love to see the band really jam. And, and we, you know, it's funny, we don't even mention the Ringo songs. 
it was nice to see Ringo do Matchbox. Right. Open the sh- open the show, and Anthem is a great uh, he is a great song. And, and Wings, Wings is a good live song to do. Mm-hmm. It really works well, and Steve Lukather's lead guitar solo is really nice in that song. Mm-hmm. So, and the, about the only criticism that I would ever make about this particular DVD is that there are moments, especially on Anthem, when Ringo's vocals are just not mixed up hot enough. I kind of felt like his vocals were at the same level as the rest of the band. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that was intentional or not, but, you know, he's singing well. It should be mixed a little bit hotter. That's yeah. that's what I felt about it. That's a good that's a, a good point. That's and really also, you know, you were just bringing up Ringo's songs. For those of us who have gone to see Ringo at, at all of his tours or most of his tours, he doesn't stray that much in his selection. I mean, it's true. Yes, he did Matchbox here, and he did the two new songs with Wings and Anthem. But you know, he's done Yellow Submarine in every tour. He's done Photograph in every tour with Little Help from My Friends. I think that you know we don't look to those songs as being high moments as people who go and see him all the time. If you're, if you're going to see Ringo for the first time or you've only seen him a few times, yes, they're wonderful moments. Yeah, and uh, I don't think that's going to change. He's been, I think he's pretty well locked into the songs he's going to do, which is, you can say what you want to say about that, but um, he, and he is, I mean, he doesn't have that many songs to do. Personally, well, well, well I, wait a minute, wait a minute. He doesn't have that many songs to do. Well, I mean, he has not as many as Paul does. Well, he's him. got 15 studio albums. Oh, okay, well, true. If you're going to say recognizable songs, there yes. There we go. But, um, no, I, I definitely wish that he would shuffle the songs around. But the thing is, and every artist is like this, or most, I should say most artists are like this, there are certain core songs that every artist feels they have to do. There's no way that Ringo can do a concert without doing With a Little Help from My Friends. Right. There's no way he can do a concert without doing Photograph. Well, you know, done, or, he, has, he has done it without doing Photograph. Yellow Submarine is the one that he really has to do. No, but, I think he's done Photograph in every tour. You think so? I'm pretty sure he has. I'd have to look that up, but I don't, I, I don't think so. And Yellow but Submarine the, is, is the song that he always does in the middle of the, of the concert, and mm-hmm. everybody stands up for Yellow Submarine. Right. Tour after tour after tour. And he always says, you're going to know what this is without even me telling you, you know, <laughs> which is very, very true. Right. So, I but, mean, I personally would love to see him, and he'll never, he, he won't, but I would like to see him dig a song out of his past that um, he has not, I mean, that he probably, he may have sung with Rory Storm, or may have done with Rory Storm, uh-huh. and... Um, I'm still going back to that Rory Storm CD because I I love that so much. But I, you know, I mean, some of those really old songs, and I get, you know, so. The I Carl was wondering. Burgers. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm very glad that he did Matchbox. Yeah, me too. But um, I personally think that where the Beatles material is concerned, he can get away with doing any song, even if it wasn't his song. I think the crowd would love it anyway. Sure. One of the highlights of. Um, the John Lennon tribute show, the from the one from Liverpool in 1990, is when Ringo submitted the video for "I Call Your Name," and I thought that his voice matched that song really well. You know, I think if he was to break out into a song like that, the crowd would love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they would. They and would um, they would absolutely love it. They there's sure would. there's certain songs from his solo career that I think would translate very well as live songs. Certainly, something like "Goodnight Vienna" or um, "Snookeroo." Mm-hmm. something like that, a rocker like that, even a dose of rock and roll. And Only You is the only top ten single he's had that he's never done live. I think, you know, in the middle of the show, a quiet moment, an acoustic moment, Ringo singing Only You, that would be fine. Right. You know, even, I don't know how, how our listeners would, would feel about this, but I've always looked at You and Me, Babe, from the Ringo album, as a one of the greatest album closers ever. Because he's saying goodnight to everybody and thanking everybody involved with the album, it's a it's it's a really good song. I think that would work really well live. Mm-hmm. That's just me. And you know, this is this may be a minor criticism, but I I certainly think that I'm the greatest has hasn't really worked that well as a live song. Mm, I think he I think he kind of has fun with that more than anything else. Um, it works. I, I, be- no, I I like it. I mean, I. I think it's I think it's kind of fun, but and he doesn't you know go longer with the song. He really cuts it short at the end. Mm-hmm. I think it works because of of 
you know, the fact that John wrote it for him and he mentions that he was born in Liverpool and that he's the greatest. So I think it's a song that we identify a lot with him. But I just wish that the band would would work on the song more and, and just it doesn't have enough juice to it as a live song. That's just my opinion. Okay. So you see, I am being a little bit critical. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, overall, you know, I think this is a tremendous uh, DVD. And I think that in a lot of ways, the DVDs of Ringo's concerts work so much better than the CDs because you don't really... It's, it's very hard to capture the energy. And so much of the, of the fun of seeing Ringo with the all-star bands is the fact that you have these tremendous lineups and you want to see them visually and you want to know what each one's doing. And, and a, that's a good point, that there is no CD from, from this tour right. yet. And I don't think there will be one. There hasn't been any, any word that they will, there will be one. So if you want to get a record of this tour, this is the only way to get it. Right. You know, and the other thing is, when you listen to Ringo's live CDs and you're hearing the Ringo material, it's very difficult to tell one tour from another. You know, Ringo live doing Yellow Submarine in tour number three is going to sound pretty close to tour number seven. Right. You know, but the only difference in the CDs and in the tours are the other musicians. So, um, you know, it's, it's a great thing to see visually and to see the, the bouncing off each other and the interaction of the musicians. And in this case, because... That all the musicians in his all-star bands have been great musicians, but it's great to see, in this particular case, one that jams a bit more. And I know that I pointed out in a previous show, it reminds me a little bit of when Peter Frampton toured with them, because when Peter toured, it was a lot more jamming. You've got Peter Frampton on guitar, use him, you know? So it's the same thing with Steve Lukather having there. So mm -hmm. it's just a, a great thing to watch. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that Peter Frampton tour. That, uh, that was something. That was a great tour. So, but anyway. Yeah, we would highly recommend getting this one called Ringo at the Ryman. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if any of you would like to get in touch with us, you can do so by writing to us at our email address, which is Steve. Things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. That's right. And if any of you want to find out about me and the work that I do and my radio program, Every Little Thing, you can go to my website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com. And every single week there's trivia on there and there's great prizes that I give away. In fact, uh, you can listen to the interview that I did with Todd Rundgren talking about touring with Ringo uh, on my website. It's a lot of interviews on the homepage. So there's a lot there to look at, to listen to, and to have fun with at KenMichaelsRadio.com. And if people want to get in touch with you and read all your many columns, although there isn't enough time in, in the day to read everything that you've written, they can go to where? Be Beatles. Uh, go to Examiner.com and search for Beatles Examiner. I'm also on Facebook under my name. And I just recently established a Paul McCartney tour news page with, where I've been posting information about the tour, both the stories I've been writing and also... Uh, information about uh, about tickets and things, and we're gonna once the tour starts actually starts up, we're gonna have all sorts of information there. So it's called Paul McCartney Tour News 2013. Um, just look for us, uh, look for for that page, and uh, and join in and you know make comments about uh, about the shows you see, and uh, and um, that'll be that'll be a lot of fun too. So. Mm. Yeah, and also we should point out, since we've been talking about this Ringo tour, that he has said that he's now going to tour in South America. He's going to tour Mexico. He said Mexico. He mentioned Colombia. He said South America, which I assume he hasn't. They haven't come out with a with an itinerary yet. And I was told that, and uh, I guess the show will probably come out around the end of the month or early next month. That probably by the time this show comes out, we should hear something or very soon thereof yeah so and this is a great band so if you haven't seen this particular lineup do go out and see ringo well yeah. if you're in south if you're in mexico and south america you'll be able to no telling what he's going to do after that right but um if you're listening to us down there and uh, haven't seen uh, ringo yet uh, by all means go see him yeah and we never mentioned richard page <laughs> no we did not we did not mention richard page um Who did I'm, I'm okay kind of okay with richard page um you know, Kyrie Eleison is a great song, so I like I like that song. Um, but uh, and Broken Wings and Broken Wings. But as far as the highlights of the sh of the show go, he's probably 
on the low end of my my highlights but but you gotta you, you gotta say that his voice is amazing i mean yeah, he sounds really so much good. like the record it's really powerful yeah he's got a he's got a great voice right really does. and only here on this particular tour will you hear the songs wings and broken wings on the same show that's right isn't that something that's right <laughs> <laughs> and they're not about Paul McCartney either. So there. That's right. <laughs> All right, so for the Beatles, things we said today, this has been Ken Michaels saying thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci for things we said today, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>